Good morning. There we go. Hey, how's everyone doing today? Woo! Woo! All right, there we go. Wonderful. Welcome to uh, April's uh, Monthly Metrics. I'm Danny Kaufman with Major Gibson Foundations. And today, our theme is going to be uh, Wikimedia for the World. So it's going to be a follow-up conversation to what we discussed last month at Metrics. Um, and so to get started, our agenda today, uh, we're going to do uh, welcomes for new hires, um, go over some anniversaries. Uh, we'll have an update from the Movement Update team, new readers update, exploring the world of Wikipedia and indigenous languages of Latin America, which I'm really excited about movement strategy update, um, and then we'll have some time for uh, questions and discussion, and of course, wiki love. So uh, let's start off by giving a warm Wikimedia welcome to uh, two new hires, Margaret Epps and Caroline Cinders in product, both based here. And also to um, two new contractors, interns, and volunteers, Arzel Yunzi in technology in France, uh, Mosca Noor in advancement, Caitlin Tanny in advancement, uh, Rosie Stephenson Goodnight uh, in CE, yes, community engagement, I should know this, um, Andrew Hall in technology, John Morrison in F&A, uh, and Antoine Raymond uh, Baboon in uh, community engagement as well. And I should apologize in advance for any uh, names that I mispronounce today. Uh, All right, and so uh, starting off with the anniversaries, with 11 years, we have uh, Tim Starling. Uh, 10 years, Robert Hassel. Six years, uh, Timo Tijoff. And five years, and hold the applause, uh, we'll get through this, uh, Faden uh, Liambadis, Mate Matias uh, Muli, James Forrester, and Daisy Chen. With uh, four years, Brennan Black, Monty Hurd, Jan Esfelt, uh, Jaime Anstey, Jamie, sorry, Jamie, uh, Eric uh, Bernhardson. Uh, celebrating three years, uh, Sarah Rodland, Giuseppe Lavagetto, Catherine Marr, Danny Horn, Dimitri Brandt, Moritz Mullenhoff. Oh, uh, Dimitri Brandt, and we'll stop there for a second. All right. And celebrating two years, uh, Moritz uh, Mullenhoff, Michael Beatty, Joel Offrecht, Steph, uh, Stefan uh, Pisan, Neil Quinn, uh, Marumita uh, Viswanathan, Calliope uh, Tsurupidan, Surpidu, sorry, uh, Byron Bogart, uh, Stefan Nazelski, and Zuzu. All right, and I'll pass it on to Maria for a movement update. Hi, I'm Maria. I'm communications manager in community engagement department. And uh, this time for the movement update, we're trying a new format. Uh, we're going to have community members presenting a lightning talk. Uh, and we have uh, uh, invited two. Uh, Tomas uh, Schalhart is a volunteer with Wikimedia Austria. Uh, Tomas? Whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, uh, I'm going to present to you a project called Wikipedia for Peace, which is uh, about improving articles about peace in Wikipedia. Uh, for example, about peace movements and peace activists. And we do that by organizing camps in Austria and this year also for the first time in Germany. And these camps usually last for about 10 days and have about 15 participants. And the people in these camps come from all over the world, and it's usually quite a diverse group of people. We write in a lot of different languages. Uh, the people are usually quite young, like students between 20 and 30 usually, usually not very experienced in Wikipedia, and we have quite a high percentage of female volunteers. We have up to 80% female participants without a special selection process. Uh, the project is a cooperation between Wikimedia Austria and a peace organization called Service Civil International organizations bring together two quite different approaches to volunteering. 
so both organizations learn learn a lot from the, each other in this project. Something that uh, the Peace Organization Service of International brings in is a kind of grassroots approach, which means the group process is really important in the camp. So we live together for 10 days, we cook together, we get to know each other and we work together. Uh, next slide. Uh, so far, two of these camps have taken place, uh, both of them in Austria in 2015 and 2016. And this year we will have two more camps in July, one in Berlin and one in Austria again. Uh, next slide. Um, with every camp, the project gets better, I would say. Uh, we, in 2016, we had much more content created. We had better group dynamics, also because we were in a more isolated location, which helps the group, actually. And each camp now has a specific topics, and uh, people choose articles from a specific list of articles rather than coming up with article ideas on their own. But that's just a short-term impact. The mid-term impact is that uh, the project is growing. Volunteers who participated in previous camps, they now become coordinators of projects. They become active in Wikimedia projects, or they even start up camps in their own communities. Uh, this March, we had a European Union where lots of people from all over Europe gathered in Austria to start up new Wikipedia for Peace projects in other parts of Europe. And the long-term uh, impact of the project is maybe best summed up by the quote I put there also on the slide, which is, be the edit you want to see in the world, um, which is a parody of a famous Gandhi quote. And uh, with the project, we want to change uh, the Wikimedia culture into a culture of peace, more diversity and community help from Wikimedia projects. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And the next uh, talk is by Florence Duvard, who's going to talk about Wikifundi. So hello, everyone. Is it OK, the sound? Yes. OK, good. So uh, let me tell you a little uh, story. Over two years ago, I spoke on the phone with the current program director of Orange Foundation, Luc, and I asked him if the foundation would be willing to support the development of a tool that would allow offline editing of Wikipedia article. A tool which could make training on and contribution to Wikipedia possible when there is no or where there is poor internet access or when the price of the data is too high, such as in Africa a tool which could be used by fledgling Wikimedia user group in Africa to support them in their outreach work. And after I explained my project, there was a long moment of silence. And then Luc said, I have been waiting for this tool for two years. So we had a deal. The tool Wikifundi was launched in uh, January during Wikindaba in Ghana. And the picture where, uh, you see in front of you is myself uh, distributing the first pilot kits to Felix, uh, Donatien, Shola, George, and Bashunda for them to test it. So next slide. A full kit is, it's very simple. It's made of one Raspberry Pi, which is a small server creating a local Wi-Fi network, a micro SD card, um, which is simply inserted into the Raspberry. And on the micro SD card, there is a MediaWiki uh, instance with a selection of templates to mimic the Wikipedia environment. Plus, we also added some swag and resources to the kit. So the, the, the system, the Wikifundi operates in French and English. The, kit, uh, weigh, the full kit weighs less than a kilo, and it costs less than $200 altogether. Slide. So Wikifundi is currently distributed in over 800 schools that belong to the digital school program of the Orange Foundation in Africa. And Wikifundi would be used in fall 2007 during an article writing challenge on Wikidia uh, in 300 of these schools. So expect our first feedback on our pilot Wikifundi probably during Wikimedia, um, Wikimania 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. Um, and to complete the 
movement update, uh, some Wikimedia Foundation highlights, uh, the movement strategy discussions uh, have, are, uh, have been open for Wikimedia Foundation staff. Uh, as you probably took part in different workshops uh, in person or virtually, I think they're going on until next week or this week? This week. Um, the, there's, uh, we launched the initiative for open citations with 60 other organizations and scholarly um, publishers to better, yes, <laughs> it is awesome, yes, we can clap. Um, there's a new team, uh, MediaWiki uh, platform, and uh, the Board of Trustees election is uh, taking place. Um, the nominations and questions are being accepted now and vo voters are invited to submit questions until May the 1st. So if you haven't, you can do that. And coming up in May is cycle two of phase one of mov movement strategy. If you don't know what this means, there is a very good, well-documented page on Meta that explains all the process on the timeline. And there's a very cool graphic, too, that explains all of this. And um, the Board of Trustees 2017 election, the voting will take place between May the 1st and May 14, and the results will be announced on May 20. And coming up is Anne Gomez with New Readers. Hello. Wow, it's been a while since I've done this. Hey guys, this is the first New Readers update at this forum since August, it turns out. Um, so as a quick reminder, New Readers is a cross-functional team here. We're working on across technology, product, communications, community engagement, and advancement. Um, so what is New Readers? It's literally what it says it is. We are here to increase readership in uh, countries where access to the internet is quickly growing by understanding and uh, serving potential readers in those countries. We started with research a little over a year ago, um, which was primarily in Mexico, Nigeria, and India. We also looked into other countries as well, so throughout all the activities that we're working on, you're gonna see other countries, but this is where the focus has been. The research took a couple different forms. Uh, the first is community, right? We wanna work really closely with our communities, user groups, volunteers, uh, chapters, to understand what they know and what they wanna know from this kind of research. We did phone surveys, hitting over 11,000 respondents in these three countries in something like 19 languages in these countries, I'm not sure exactly, uh, and designed research doing deep contextual uh, inquiry and ethnographic interviews so that we could understand some more of the context. And what we learned from that, like at a very, there's a lot, but the very high level is that awareness and use of Wikipedia among internet users is really low in these countries. In Mexico, the highest of the countries we surveyed, just over half the internet users reported having heard of Wikipedia, like literally having heard the word. And in Egypt, that was just, just over one in five. So we've got a lot of way to go here. So where we're at with all this data is that we're building prototypes. When we talk about prototypes here, we're talking about not just web prototypes or software prototypes, but also process and communication strategies and types of grants. And I'm gonna walk you through those different things. So it took a while to get from research into this kind of place of building. And we're in a space where we're trying really hard to be focused towards a few different objectives. And so you'll see a lot of iteration and circling back to make sure that we're reinforcing and staying focused on our goal. Um, it's been complicated. <laughs> so there were 24 findings. We're down to a couple focus areas. We're just gonna skip right over that. Um, <laughs> their priorities here are awareness and access. And what we mean by priorities here is just that these are the things that we're focused on working on. There's tons of other good work happening in the movement in other areas. Local content, local languages is obviously hugely important, but that's just not where, where we're focusing. So when we talk about awareness and access, those are our primary goals. So what are we doing? That's the exciting part. And I'm gonna pass it to Zach to talk about our way in awareness. Thank you, Anne. So my name is Zachary McKeon, and I'm on the communications team here. Uh, Florence, so exciting that you're here on this call this morning, uh, or afternoon, evening, elsewhere in the world. So when we talk about awareness, people have lots of ideas, uh, but I wanna spell this out a little bit more. When we talk about awareness, we're talking about a few different things. Recognition, use value, and attribution. And if we make those into statements, it's I've heard of Wikipedia, I use Wikipedia for, and I got it from Wikipedia, or I learned it from Wikipedia. And I'm gonna talk about each one here. So we go back to the data that came from the New Readers team, and we saw that 
in our target regions, our, our real focus regions, awareness of Wikipedia from a recognition level is low, right? So when we asked the question, have you heard of Wikipedia, people responded, I have heard of it only, you know, 25% of India, 23% of Nigeria, 45% of Mexico, and this is among the general population. So what do we do to change that? Well, the prototype we're building here is a regional campaign. And the way that we're gonna work on regional campaigns is by first conducting a community messaging survey. Uh, that means sending out questions of, how do you explain Wikipedia in India? How do you explain Wikipedia in Nigeria? What tools do you need to do that better? And in India, we've done this and we had 320 responses. In Nigeria, we've done this and we had 91 responses. These really guide our approach. Then we form what we're calling a community promotion team. This is kind of like a small marketing group uh, that is made up entirely of volunteers. So they make sure that all of the material we will make will be accurate and aligned with their expectations and their experiences, that they feel it's right. So this is not made by us in San Francisco or somebody outside of the country. This is grounded in the community's suggestions on messaging and how they believe we can best explain ourselves for these regions. And then finally, we find ourselves a regional marketing partner. That means somebody who's a specialist in making videos and telling stories in places like India and Iraq and Mexico and Nigeria. Where are we? Underway. The first one we've done is actually with this gentleman here, uh, Sarmad Yassin in Iraq. Uh, we've been making a video with him right now with Jack Rabah, who will talk about this a little bit later. And this video is in production, so stay tuned. There's gonna be a video ad uh, shown in Iraq, and we hope to have that ready in about the next month. We're also doing one in Nigeria. Uh, we have a marketing team of five there. This is three of the five. We have Sam Oye, Shola, Olinyan. He is our uh, president of Wikimedia User Group Nigeria. And then we have Coyote Youssef. Add to this group Blossom, uh, who some of you may have met in Berlin, and Elatimi Tayo. We will also be undertaking a regional campaign in India. Right now we're trying to find the partner for that. So if you have suggestions, uh, agencies, video makers, storytellers that you think are great in India, you can come to us right now. Use value. We want people to know what Wikipedia is useful for. Um, so this is again some of the data we had from the Global Reach team. Uh, in their survey, they asked people, what do you use Wikipedia for? So if you take that 25% of people in India who said they have heard of Wikipedia, we asked them, what do you use it for? We believe demonstrating use will help increase adoption and retention, that people will go from being aware to being advocates and being participants. Here, I wanna really call out some amazing work happening from community engagement, and especially with Casey Harold. Uh, she started a rapid grants program that is starting to work with community members who have ways to promote use values for Wikipedia. And so two to call out here, one is Shola in Nigeria, who I mentioned before, and the other is Mompate in Botswana, here he is. Uh, they're both doing programs where they're not only introducing totally new people to Wikipedia, but saying, here's how you use it, here's how you get value out of it. The final thing to talk about today is attribution. Um, we want people to know when they are on Wikipedia. And New Reader's research showed us that sometimes people are on Wikipedia and don't know they're there. Um, that was a crisis a little bit in design and UI. So the mobile web team undertook an incredible task. And here I want to shout out Olga Nunez and the rest of the team there. They basically have designed new headers for our mobile pages. So going from uh, on the left here with no branding to an added bar to call out where you are. We basically discovered that people don't read URLs as brand marks and we need to make this a little bit more prominent. But this isn't just uh, for Wikipedia in English. It's being localized to all the projects and to all the languages. Um, so, in fact, it started with Italian and Catalan, I believe, as the testing areas to make sure that it didn't disrupt anything. And once that was shown, we started to adapt it here. Shout out to Nierzer for the design elements. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Anne again for access. Thanks, Zach. 
All right, so uh, improving access. So this is another one where we're approaching this from a couple different pieces, um, offline and affordability. So there's a lot of overlap between these things, a lot of solutions that probably address both these barriers. But we think about offline as people who have less or no internet access, and affordability as for people who, for whom internet access is very expensive. Um, so offline. Some of you may remember, there are a few people here I think who were around. In 2010, the foundation was really seriously investing in offline, and a couple years later decided to stop pursuing that in the interest of not uh, spending resources on a last mile solution and instead investing in zero. So there's been a lot of really amazing work done at that time by the foundation, and again, still in the, in the interim by volunteers, <coughs> excuse me, uh, community members, by NGOs and for-profits, uh, that's been ongoing, and the world has changed. So we're in a place of kind of picking up these threads and trying to understand what's going on here so that we can best figure out how to spend our resources and, and you know, uh, let those projects really expand and scale. There's a lot going on here. So this is like just the players that we know of who are doing this. Every month or two, I hear about more offline solutions for Wikipedia. Send them my way if you know any. It's complicated, so we're still in the space of figuring it out. Um, but in the meanwhile, we're starting out with a few different projects to kind of kick this off. Uh, the first is grants. Um, we're advising Kiwix and Wikimed on a grant to support fully offline reading for specifically medical content. These are individually packaged Wikimed apps um, with medical content in different languages. They're really great. Um, that grant is ongoing. In our Android app, for people who use that, we are expanding the clarity and functionality of the saved pages features for people who have intermittent connections or want to save on data so they can store those articles for later. And the Android team actually picked up a wish list request from Doc James to add Zim support. That's the file format that Kiwix creates with their uh, content packages in. And that was a request on the community tech wish list that the Android team has picked up and is working forward on this quarter. So we're super excited to see that support. And on the mobile web, we're also supporting readers there. So we heard over and over again, people like to download and share content from the web, and we didn't really have a great way to do that. We found people taking screenshots and all sorts of other things. So over the last couple of months, we did community consultations and rounds of evaluative research to understand what concept we could use to best address this. And the outcome is surprisingly simple. It's great. Um, we're, these are, again, Nearsar's designs to do a mobile, like, optimized PDF um, that people should be able to download and share. Um, and the other front of access is affordability, and I'm going to hand this to Jack, who's on the Hangout, to talk us through a case study. Marhaba. Greetings from Jordan. Uh, my name is Jack Rabah, and I head partnerships for the Middle East and Africa on the Global Reach team. Uh, so let's talk affordability. Um, as Anne mentioned earlier, affordability is one of the key findings from our new readers' research and it's part of our work across access. On the world are coming online, we continue to see that cost of uh, data is a major barrier. Next slide, please. Data affordability, for example, in Iraq is a big problem. Like Florence, I also would like to share an amazing story with you. Sarmad and his wife, Ravan, have been Wikipedia editors since 2008. They had an idea. Their idea was to expand access to free knowledge in Iraq and encourage Iraqis to contribute to their rich history and heritage. Starting in November 2015, Sarmad worked very hard to make Wikipedia Zero happen in Iraq. And this community-led partnership, supported by the foundation, is something we're very proud of. Next slide. OK, so we conducted research to make sure we knew that this is a real problem and to help set our goals. Our initial phone survey in Iraq showed that 80% of internet users said that they use the internet less because of data costs. And that's a big number. Next slide, please. To break this down a little further, we see that for um, Arabic speakers uh, affected by cost of data, 41% say they use it a little less, use it a lot less, and 20% said they cannot afford it. Kurdish speakers are, are even more impacted by cost, stated that they cannot afford the internet at all. This is an issue. 
Next slide, please. So on February 28th of this year at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, we launched this partnership with AsiaCell Iraq, bringing 12 million subscribers free access to Wikipedia. Subscriber base represents about 40% of the Iraqi population. So this partnership was showcased in over 100 pub uh, publications in 31 countries. And as Zach mentioned earlier, we're currently working with AsiaCell to finalize a TV video ad to explain what Wikipedia is to Iraq. The social media campaigns, AsiaCell sent out an SMS blast to their subscribers, informing them of this partnership. Next slide, please. So we're planning um, a second phone survey to capture the success of these marketing campaigns and awareness efforts in Iraq. So because the two or three minutes that was allocated isn't going to do this justice, stay tuned for a more comprehensive update on Iraq. Thank yeah. you. So <laughs> there, there's a little bit of a lag here. Um, I, I, my fingers are crossed for the, for the internet connection here in Jordan. So far, it's, it's done me proud. So, um, I encourage all of you to follow the New Reader's work across access and awareness on Meta so you can keep up with the action there. And now I'm going to hand it off virtually to Eddie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon from sunny Cochabamba, Bolivia. Uh, my name is Eddie Avila, and I'm currently serving as Rising Voices Director at Global Voices. Uh, hopefully, some of you may be familiar with the organization uh, since we share some of the same values and even have several community members in common, such as Suba from Wikimedia Odia and also SJ Klein, who was one of the very first Global Voices members way back in 2005. Uh, for a very quick summary, uh, sorry, next slide, please. For a very quick summary of what we do at Rising Voices, we provide training, mentoring, and network building with marginalized or underrepresented communities so that they could tell their own story, representing themselves online on their own terms. Uh, one of our focus areas has been our work with different indigenous groups across Latin America, helping them use digital media and the web to share issues important to them, and even if that means to do so in their own language. My personal work in indigenous languages go back uh, to 2007, when I co-founded a project called Voces Bolivianas, providing blogging workshops to different groups across Bolivia, including Aymara University students in the city of El Alto. And as a result of the project, the first Aymara language blog was started. Um, a seed may have also been planted even earlier when hearing a bit of Quechua around the house. My grandmother spoke fluent Quechua and just having the words and phrases ingrained in my memory uh, made me realize the importance of language for one's culture and one's self-identity. Uh, while I'm far from fluent, uh, you know, learning Quechua still remains a very high priority for me. Next slide, to, please. So back in 2007, when I first started this work, I would hear some of the students we work with share how many of their parents who were migrants from the countryside would discourage the continued use of their, of their native language, uh, reasoning that learning Spanish better or adding the, even a third language like English would be much, beneficial, much more beneficial for their educational or job prospects. Uh, fortunately, I think this is changing in some communities, um, and I do think the internet has played a role in attracting a new generation of speakers, which is essential for any language to live on. Um, of course, I don't believe that the internet plays a magical role in saving languages, uh, but I think it could be a major part of a wider strategy that includes public policy, traditional learning, academic research, and, and others. Um, and I think the internet is just simply a tool for making it easier for people to connect with one another despite geographical barriers. And I, uh, I sort of cringe when I hear headlines or see headlines when they say such and such platform is saving such and such language. Uh, because from my own personal experience, I know that it is the people who are personally invested and committed that are using these tools to promote their language. Uh, many of these language advocates do so without financial compensation or um, you know, may believe that they're the only person like them interested in promoting their language, but that's far from the case. A friend of mine who was part of that original group blogging in Naimara told me that when he used to look for information online in Naimara, there was practically nothing. And that's why he wants to be a play an active role in creating information that could be uniquely expressed, expressed in their language so that the next generation does not find that same void like he did. Um, you know, being inspired by these communities is what led us to start a, a series of activities called 
indigenous language digital activism to facilitate a space so that the digital advocates can connect with one another to share experiences. Um, so far, we've organized a series of gatherings in six countries and a seventh coming this weekend in, in Chile. Uh, to make these workshops as inclusive as possible, we reached out to other like-minded groups interested in how the internet is helping to make content available in, in even more languages. And I think Wikimedia is the major part of that movement. Uh, for the workshop in Oaxaca, Mexico in 2014, we reached out to Wikimedia Mexico, where Ivan and Carmen both uh, enthusiastically joined forces with us and have been a very trusted ally ever since. Uh, we also had a very great experience with Wikimedia Venezuela, where Oscar Costero uh, committed to co-sponsoring the participation of Leonardo Fernandez. He is a Wikipedia NYU Nike editor for the workshop in Bogota, since NYU Nike is a language spoken across both countries. And in Colombia, Sebastian Quintero from the Wikimedians of Colombia group has also been a very a strong partner. Uh, next slide, please. So as I started to learn more about Wikipedia on, on a more practical level, I was became you know, generally curious about why certain languages were represented on Wikipedia, who are the people behind the scenes. Uh, sometimes upon first glance, it's not always apparent about the history of the site because many people choose to edit anonymously, which is you know, their right. Uh, I was curious to see how challenges compare uh, with Wikipedia, with other you know, digital media. Um, you know, with social media, for example, one can tweet or write on their Facebook profile however they want using the orthography of their choosing. But with Wikipedia, consensus must be reached, which is not always easy. Next slide, please. So with these questions and through the encouragement of several of the groups I mentioned earlier, I thought Rising Voices would be the right team to convene the discussion by applying for a project grant, which we received last year. Uh, following some excellent feedback from the foundation staff and others who were involved in the review process, we started the project to gain a wider look at these projects. So the first phase is taking place right now in the form of a participatory map research mapping project where we are documenting the experiences of more than a dozen active incubator sites in Latin America to learn about the challenges and strategies to overcome these obstacles. Uh, for this project, we hired Rodrigo Perez as the lead researcher responsible for the bulk of the data collection analysis. Rodrigo is a Zapotec language advocate from Mexico who has been involved with a number of free software localization projects and had previously took part in efforts to launch Wikipedia and Zapotec. Next slide, please. So the project design includes a lot of outreach, a lot of talking with as many people as possible, um, everyone from current editors, both native speaking and those who have learned the language as second or third languages, uh, current and potential readers of this information, different regional affiliates who have implemented their own activities designed to support these communities, such as Wikimedia Mexico, who is currently working with groups in Yucatan Peninsula with Wikipedia, Wikipedia and Maya, and other groups that would like a little more guidance on how to best support these groups, as well as other institutions that may be positioned to provide support. Also includes a lot of online research, uh, reading blog reports, leaving messages for editors, and basically seeing how much information can be gathered from existing information on the web. Uh, sometimes these contacts lead somewhere, sometimes it ends up being a dead end, but more often than that, more often than not, most people have been very generous with their time, uh, willing to share their thoughts on the subject. Uh, collecting quantitative data also provides a good idea on with whom we should speak. There are a lot of great tools out there providing information about the most active editors, number of edits. So thank you to all those that continue to produce tools that help uh, with gaining a better understanding of, of the status of these Wikipedias. Uh, so one thing we've been asking during these interviews is how this project could help them in their own work. And one, uh, one of the groups we worked with, uh, we spoke with, indicated that they would like a type of roadmap with recommendations and best practices that could provide some basic guidance on working with these communities, uh, but still can be flexible enough to take into account certain contexts or unique challenges so that it does not become a one-size-fits-all model. Uh, we also hope by conducting this exercise, we can provide more visibility for existing projects in need of more volunteers, as well as showing examples of how projects are working uh, in case of other communities want to step forward and share knowledge in their own language. Uh, next, next slide, please. Um, even though we have a couple months to go with more interviews and outreach, uh, we still want to connect with the language committee with who we still want to learn a little more about their work. And I think they're doing a lot of great job. Uh, follow along on the, on the email list and it's a, it's a very uh, serious work, but I think there's a lot of committed people to do so. I'm really, so I'm really eager to learn more about their work. Uh, so I just thought I'd share some early observations that we had that we've had so far. Um, it's sort of hard to generalize how all Wikipedia and indigenous languages are set up. Uh, some were promoted by non-speakers who believed that it would be smart to have a Wikipedia in that language. And by setting one up, then it might attract native speakers. 
um, talking about some of the earlier incubator projects, um, while others are, are being promoted by speakers that acquired the language as second languages, and there's some other native speaker, non-native speaker partnerships uh, running. Um, one quick example of an unlikely pair that's making Wikipedia work in, in Paraguay. Um, it's a country where approximately 90% of the country speaks Guarani, either as a monolingual or bilingual speaker. However, less than 5% identify as a member of the Guarani ethnicity. Uh, we met a gentleman from outside the capital of Asuncion who is a researcher, a Guarani teacher, and even has his own Guarani language podcast that was really interested in contributing to Wikipedia and his language. Uh, although he wasn't entirely comfortable with the editing software, um, mainly because of, of his, his, his uh, work commitments. Um, so in comes an experienced editor from Lithuania, who even though he doesn't speak Guarani, has been extremely supportive in indigenous communities and working towards creating free knowledge in their language and offered to upload and format the information sent to him um, by the teacher in Paraguay, you know, with the eventual hopes that uh, the teacher can you know, learn the software and, and, and upload it himself. But it's uh, one way uh, to get kind of the same goal. Um, and also really quickly, uh, we've seen also contrib contributors with varying degrees of knowledge of how Wikipedia is governed, um, you know, what's, what the steps are needed to you know, get a project going, as well as a, as a varying knowledge of knowledge about the pillars. And we sort of suspect that this may be the case where in countries where there may not be a local affiliate, um, because uh, many times affiliates uh, run workshops or presentations that could establish that, that partnership, that relationship that could be a mentor or um, you know, a source of information for some of these, these newcomers. And finally, I think conflict res resolution remains a major challenge, especially with projects with few editors. Next slide, please. So through this outreach we have made uh, over the last several months, um, I'm happy to share some unexpected yet very positive outcomes as a result of these connections. Uh, one group, the Ibero Cope group, has been a very welcoming space um, to, to, to me personally. Uh, they're eager to lend advice, uh, tips based on their deeper experience with the movement and providing introductions to other members. I also made a great connection with Vahid from the Education Department, with whom I, I connected with this group in El Alto, Bolivia, who was interested in reactivating Wikipedia and Aymara uh, through an education project at the Public University in El Alto. And I also made a great connection with Wikimedia Canada, that is running an outreach project with the First Nations community. And we're in talks to co-organize an event or edit a thon around First Nations topics to coincide with Wikimedia conference this August. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can imagine, there's a wealth of information collected and yet to be um, organized and, and distributed um, and a lot of people we, with, with, with whom we still like to connect with. And some of our next steps is present this information in a variety of ways so we could uh, attract feedback from all the relative stakeholders to further the discussion uh, and, and, and ask for their help to fill in some of the information gaps, but also to raise awareness about this movement for sharing free knowledge in native languages in Latin America. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so that was a really quick uh, overview of, of this work. Uh, I'd like to thank Maria for the invitation uh, and thanks to Samantha, Samantha for the help with the presentation slides. And uh, thanks to everyone for their work with the Wikimedia, Wikimedia Found Movement. And we at Global Voices are really excited to be, you know, a small part of that. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Eddie. So up next is Guillaume with the Movement Strategy Update. Hi. Um, so my name is Guillaume Pommier, and I'm going to talk about strategy today. And I know that the topic of strategy can be a bit dry, so I'm going to try something new. And I'm not going to talk about cycles or phases or tracks. I'm going to try and do this presentation entirely in emoji. <laughs> so there will be no text and no data, um, just emoji. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> If we, if we think back about the, the, the past 16 years, um, I mean, we, we have accomplished a lot. Uh, we, we have created and curated uh, this amazing body of, uh, of free knowledge composed of millions of articles and millions of media files in hundreds of languages. And um, as someone uh, put it in the values discussions, uh, we're a community of uh, hundreds of thousands of people building monuments to people's knowledge. And it's really easy to get lost in the day-to-day -day routine of editing or of the work here. Um, but we, we have accomplished um, something uh, truly remarkable, and we should 
acknowledge that. Um, and as we think about the past 16 years, that also gets us um, thinking about the next uh, 60, 16 years. So what, what more should we do? Uh, what else should we be doing by, uh, you know, in those next uh, 16 years? And so 16 years, we're basically saying 2030 because 2030 is a round number and we like round numbers. <laughs> and um, when we think about the future, we don't have a, a crystal ball. So um, think, thinking about the future is basically an exercise uh, in imagination. But because we're Wikimedians, it's an exercise in imagination based on facts and sources and references and trends. So talking about trends, um, what, what can we know about... Oh, sorry. Uh, what, what can we know about um, the world in 2030? Um, what, what should we know? Well, you, you've, heard it, you, you've heard this before, but we know that there will be a lot more people, um, particularly in Asia and Africa. Uh, we know that uh, technology will uh, evolve dramatically um, through mobile devices and rich media and um, messaging and new interfaces. We know that it's going to take about 100 years for children uh, in lower income countries to reach the same kind of education levels uh, as what we have uh, in developed countries. And we also know that there is a trend towards um, centralization of the internet and consolidation of power into the hands of a few giant companies, particularly in the, in the tech industry. And as we think about the trends, we also need to think about, you know, going beyond what we know and who we know and trying to bring in uh, more voices. Because we, we have a very ambitious vision, uh, but we are not alone uh, in trying to accomplish that. We are part of an ecosystem and we, we need others, we need partners. Um, and those voices should be part of that discussion because they will be part of the, of the future. And what, they, what this entails is hundreds of uh, interviews and uh, small groups discussions and research. So for example, the foundation uh, is partnering with Reboot in Indonesia and Brazil to conduct research that is uh, similar to what was done with the New Readers program. And um, so they will talk with partners and subject matter experts. Uh, they will conduct uh, contextual inquiries um, with readers in their own environment to see how they use uh, the, the websites. And, and so this is about places where we're not uh, well known. And in parallel to that, there are also online surveys uh, conducted in places where we are very popular to try and understand how people um, perceive and use uh, Wikimedia products. And all of this will uh, inform community discussions. And as I was mentioning, we, we need to know a little bit about the, about the future in order to uh, figure out our place in it. So in order to identify some of those global trends, uh, we're also partnering with people who are uh, doing some uh, scenario planning. And that will give us some information around um, demographics and technology and uh, media consumption habits um, and um, access to knowledge um, and, and policy. If you have any recommendations about uh, people to talk to or research to conduct, uh, you are more than welcome to, um, to add those recommendations to Meta. Um, but you're also uh, strongly encouraged to uh, reach out to those people yourself because the, the foundation can do um, everything alone. We're a, a global and distributed movement. And experience has shown that when it comes to building relationships, um, building those relationships you know, on the local scale is much more likely to, uh, to bear fruit than a centralized approach. So find those experts, find those possible partners, talk to them, uh, see what you learn, and uh, you know, share that with the rest of the movement. And the foundation has also reserved some budget for affiliates who want to run some of those um, small group uh, discussions with experts. Um, so um, if, you're, if you're interested in doing that, uh, you can reach out to the team, you can reach out to me, and I can direct you to uh, people who can get you started. Now, obviously, um, you know, this is just one part of, um, of the puzzle. And as you know, there have been a lot of um, community discussions, uh, starting with, uh, with the, the foundation's all hands, and also continuing with the many discussions that have happened recently on the wiki, 
and the workshops that have been organized by, by affiliates um, and the recent Wikimedia conference in Berlin. And when I talk about new voices, it's not just people outside the movement, uh, it's also people within the movement who don't necessarily um, engage in those kind of discussions uh, very often. And the, the foundation is working with uh, 18 uh, coordinators um, who are uh, organizing and facilitating discussions uh, in many languages across wikis um, to reach people where they are with the support of the uh, community engagement department. And volunteers have done that as well, and as I, went, I, was, as I was mentioning, groups and affiliates as well. And um, so in, in, if, the, if you've been around for a few years, you know that in some of the past processes, um, some questions were um, very guided. They were like, what do you think about mobile and its impact and everything? And uh, some participants felt that they, they felt constrained. They, they felt that they, they didn't have the space to express um, you know, the variety of their opinions and thoughts. So this year we started with a, at, a, at an earlier stage uh, and a, a much broader question about, you know, what do you think we should be doing by 2030? And for many participants, um, you know, they, they enjoy that freedom um, and, and we got a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of useful input. Um, and other were just like, May, I really don't know what you want from me. And, and that's fine. I mean, we have, um, you know, people think in different ways, um, and there are different ways to, to engage, and soon we will start to, to discuss specific topics in more detail. So if you haven't felt that you could participate before, uh, it's coming soon. And the coordinators and, the, and volunteers have summarized a lot of those discussions on Meta, uh, and a more quantitative analysis will be posted in the next few days. So, until we get some more research, what, what are people discussing so far? There are not, no big surprises. Um, so, so what people are talking about is basically collaboration and partnerships, um, community health, uh, content quality and neutrality, partnering with the education sector, um, building a, a global movement and serving uh, emerging markets, um, staying relevant through innovation, um, content gaps and biases, um, structures and governance in the movement. It's a bit difficult because I have to retranslate from emoji to English. <laughs> <laughs> um, languages, diversity and inclusion, uh, supporting new and experienced contributors and defending our values. So um, some of these are, are less about imagining the future and more about you know, how we get there. Um, and they all, will, uh, they will all have a place um, some, at some point in the process. And um, as I was mentioning, we're going to move into, um, into more detail with these topics. Um, so we're going to, to take a closer look at, at, at the main ones. Um, so if you're particularly interested in um, you know, content gaps and biases or the possible business models that can be used across the movement, or maybe you know, moving beyond the model of the Western Encyclopedia. Uh, you will be able to engage, uh, to share research, and to discuss your findings, and to discuss with other people interested in those topics, uh, starting in about a week. So if you haven't felt this far that you could contribute, or that if you've not been satisfied, um, give it a chance with the, the, the next uh, discussions. And so, you know, I, I know that the, the process can be confusing and the jargon can be confusing. So I, I just wanted to take a moment to extend an invitation. Um, if you've been confused or if you have questions or if you have concerns, um, you can reach out to the team, you can reach out to me. Uh, and no matter how busy we seem to be, there will always be time to, to listen to you and, and provide answers to the best of our abilities. If, you, if you're not sure who to contact, you can contact me. I will uh, either respond or redirect uh, your, uh, your questions. You can also um, send me an email in emoji or, or something. I will try to decrypt it. Now, just to, to, to finish, um, I want to say that 
this is about um, figuring out our collective future. And um, to me, it's, it's exciting. I know it's not exciting for everyone. So if you're not excited, uh, be practical. And this is going to impact your work and your budget and your headcount. So maybe not this fiscal year, but the next one. So you should probably uh, be part of it in, in some way. Um, and there are many ways to, uh, to participate. I hope that you will find one that works for you. Thank you, Guillaume. And let's give it up one more time for all of our presenters today. All right, so we have about nine minutes uh, for questions and discussions. I've got one question for Guillaume from ILC, which is, for the strategy process, what does finished look like? Um, I don't know if I can if I can answer that without jargon. Uh, <laughs> uh, what does finish? Okay, so the first finish is um, around Wikimania when we um, the direction um, will sort of have emerged from the research and the uh, discussions, and after that there will be more discussions about how to implement it and who does what. Um, so I would say the first finish line is. Um, August with the direction, and um, second finish line is early next year when we figure out who does what. Yeah, uh, this is a question for new readers. Is there a place I can compare the statistics about uh, engagement, uh, understanding of Wikipedia, et cetera, with existing statistics about the US, Europe, and places that are not new readers? Hi, I want that so much. Um, we don't have comparable phone surveys for sort of like the global north, in part because you can't do phone surveys like those in many countries that have more established anti-spam and anti, you know, like protection, privacy protection, all that. Um, but there is work, I believe, under Track C to do some sort of in the strategy, do some sort of comparable thing, probably in an online survey that if anyone from Track C wants to speak to, they can. Hi, I have a question for Delphine. Um, maybe she can talk a bit more about the online editing component of the thing she was talking about whose name I've forgotten. Huh? Florence, sorry. I'm very embarrassed and I'm very sorry. <laughs> it's weird, this manner of always confusing Delphine and me. <laughs> OK, so. Sorry, I will repeat the question now if Hans knows it's addressed to her. Um, <laughs> you, you, show, you presented about uh, an offline editing thing, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the, the offline editing features that exist in that and how that works exactly. OK, well, essentially when we did it, we um, tried to identify, um, oh, by the way, so in case, the box is here, and these are the cables. So it's it's very small, right? So it, when it uh, works, um, it opens something that really looks like Wikipedia, except on Macintosh, for which there is a, a problem of fixed screens. If, oh, so if anyone knows how to help us on this and avoid this fixed screen thing, please contact us. This would be very helpful. Otherwise, it looks very much like uh, a regular um, browser thing. And it works pretty similarly to Wikipedia, except that, for example, there is no uh, IP editing. You have to register an account. Um, and it, we, what we have been trying to do is to import as many templates we felt reasonable. So not all of them. We made a selection of templates based on the, the, the number of times they were used. So for example, all the templates necessary to do info boxes for cities or for schools or for countries are in, inserted in, the, in the, the SD card, but you may not find every single template that currently exists on Wikipedia. 
So there are technically speaking some little elements not working, but otherwise the visual editor is working uh, versus the wiki code. Um, the, most of the, the regular admin uh, system are working as well. Uh, when it doesn't work, it's when it needs to make a call outside. Let me give you an example. In, in increasingly, in info boxes, we are using data coming from Wikidata. And of course, in this case, that cannot work. So one of the limits of the system might be all the info boxes that make a call to data currently being hosted on Wikidata. Does that answer your question, or do you need some more stuff? Um, kind of. I was mostly wondering, you say it's offline editing, so I guess people write edits and then submit them later? Um, this, this wasn't very clear from either your website or the presentation. Oh, okay. So it's, imagine the thing completely off, off internet. There is no internet whatsoever. The, th the way you do it is that you use this thing that you plug into electricity and it autom automatically creates a small uh, Wi-Fi network, something that might cover a room, maybe a big room. And then anyone can just use a browser, open the browser, and identify in the list of Wi-Fi network the wiki funding network. So they will connect themselves to this wiki funding network and will be able to access only the content that is on the little box. So the way people do it is that they can edit within this uh, completely closed network they can create articles, they can modify their stuff. So we don't know exactly how many people can connect themselves all together. We made a few tests during Wiki in Daba and at least a dozen people could work together at the same time, even if it was probably much more slowly than what you might expect, for example, if you were online in, um, in San Francisco, for example. So you can set up a system in a room with, for example, a dozen people who, were, who will work together directly on the article, which is on Wikifundi, right? Then when the article is finished, there is no uh, automatic syncing. Uh, this is on purpose because we felt it might be too problematic to do automatic syncing between the real Wikipedia and the Wikifundi. So the person has to manually uh, Take, copy and pass the code in the article and then somehow get online and copy and pass the code in the Wikipedia article. To give an example, uh, the writing contest we intend to do in the African schools, these schools are absolutely not connected to internet at all. There is, it's not that the internet is on and off, it's just not connected at all. So the way we will be doing it is actually quite uh, challenging. The people will use the Wikifundi as a small closed network within the school. They will write the article completely offline within the small closed network. And then when the article is done, they will do a copy pass on, of the code and it will be put on a USB key. And then the USB key will be transported to a place where there is internet access. And the person will take the code uh, saved on the USB key to put it on Wikipedia. So it's, it's something that for us is normally very quick. Um, in such circumstances become increasingly uh, heavy and difficult to implement. But that's the only way we can have these kids uh, being trained and work together to write articles. That makes lots of sense. Thank you. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Any other ones in IRC? No? All right. In that case, we will move right along. Um, we have a few minutes for some wiki love. I give some wiki love to Guillaume for doing the emoji presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, I actually could say this every month or every day, but I'd like to give some wiki love to the blog and social folks, um, Ed Earhart, 
Samir, uh, who works with us in Egypt, and um, Aubrey Johnson, they have upped their game so much. I'm so proud of them. So I just wanted to give a shout out to you. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. OK. Um, so this just about wraps up our, uh, our April metrics. Um, just one quick reminder. Oh, I see one in the back. Robert. Very important. Um, and so just a quick reminder, uh, we do have a special uh, mixer this afternoon from 4 to, I think it goes to 6 p.m., but from 4 to 4.30, we have around 60 Googlers who are going to be visiting our office as part of a, an appreciation and a thank you that we're giving them for all their support during Google Give Week in December. So I really encourage um, all of you to come join us and to come interact and welcome um, all these wonderful guests to our office today. So with that said, uh, we are done. Thank you. Thank you.